In this tutorial, I wanted to walk you through how we might structure some of the code that we saw in the previous tutorial. So if you look at the top of this code, you can see that we've pound included glue.h and freeglut.h like we've done before. And if you look down in main, you can also see that we've done standard glut and glue initialization. Now looking at the project space, you can see that we have a couple of shaders here that we've included in source files. We have a vertex shader called vertex shader.vsh, and we also have a fragment shader called fragment shader.fsh. Now, going back to main, you can see that I've included this utility function here called read file. Its job is to open a file and return us back a string representation of that file. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of this. This is really not the point of it. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and shrink this file down. So let's go ahead and drop down to main. And on line 55 and 56, you can see that we make two calls to read file. In the first call to read file, you can see that we pass it vertex shader.vsh, which is this file up here. And in the second call, you can see that we're passing it fragment shader.fsh. The end result of this is that we've opened these two files and put them into our variables vertex shader source code and fragment shader source code. Now, dropping down to the next line, you can see that we've made a call to make vertex shader. So if we scroll up just a bit, you can see that make vertex shader is right here. Notice that this function takes in the source code as a string. So the first thing that we do is call gl create shader and we pass it the constant gl vertex shader. In other words, we want to make a vertex shader. This is going to return us an ID and we store that in our variable vertex shader ID. And just after that, we call this gl shader source. And if you remember from the tutorial, what this does is bind the source code to this vertex shader ID. Just after that, we call gl compile shader and this is what compiles the vertex shader. And then as a last step, we return the vertex shader ID. You can also see down here on line 58 that we've called make fragment shader, which is just right here. In fact, I'll scroll up just a bit. Make fragment shader is really similar to make vertex shader. In fact, the only difference is really right here when we call gl create shader, we pass the constant gl fragment shader instead of gl vertex shader. All right, good. So let's drop back here to main. And here in line 59, you can see that we call make shader program, which is located right here. And again, this is just a function that I've made, but notice that we pass the vertex shader ID and the fragment shader ID, and they come in as parameters. Now on the inside of this program, the first thing that we do is call gl create program. And again, this is going to return us an ID that we store into our variable shader ID. And then just after that, we'll call gl attach shader twice. Again, remember it's necessary to attach both the vertex shader and the fragment shader to the main shader program. Just after that, we'll call gl link program, passing it the shader program ID, and then we'll return that ID back to the main function. In fact, you can see that comes in right here into shader program ID. Now, to be able to use this program, we need to call gl use program, and we pass it the ID. And a lot of times for debugging purposes, I like to print the IDs out of the vertex shader and the fragment shader and the shader program as a whole. And you can see that I've done that here in lines 61 through 63. Now, one last thing to note is that when we're done with a shader program, we can always call gl delete program and pass it the shader program ID. It's always good to clean up your resources. Okay, so that's it. Hopefully that makes sense and you've seen how we might apply some kind of structure to our code.